Hi and welcome back to another art journal video. Today I'm going to make a page for my Year in Flowers disc bound journal and today's letter is going to be P and I'm going to use this stamp set with the poppies. Now this is an Alta new stamp set and I'm going to open up the package so you can see it better. It does come with um, the dies as well as uh, the stamps. It is one of those layering stamp sets but you can also use just the outline and color it in with your favorite mediums. This is one of the stamp sets that Alta New releases for their Build a Flower collection. They release a different flower stamp set on the first of each month and just for today the whole collection is 20% off, including the one that I'm using today. So it's a great deal because you get both the stamp set and the, die, the matching dies. As always you will find the links down below to check them out. And uh, let's start by creating my background for today's page. I'm going to do some gel printing today. This is a gel printing plate by Jelly Arts. There are many in the market and uh, there are different sizes and shapes. Now here I have a mixed media page which is um, 5x5 I believe, slightly smaller than the 6x6 page. And I will be working with this one on my gel plate. I'm also going to bring in my Arteza acrylic paints. This is a box that was sent to me as part of the PR program by Arteza. Keep in mind that this is not a sponsored video. I don't do sponsored videos. However, I thought it was a great uh, idea to grab them and show them to you. They have a great price. You get 60 different colors in this beautiful packaging. Plus, they have a great price. They are $39.99 for all the 60 colors. And you can grab them in an even better price. I do share down below a coupon code for 10% off site-wide. So anyway, I just chose the colors that I'm going to work with. And I'm starting out on my background by using Naples Yellow. Every time I'm using a different color, I'm going to let you know which one I use. I don't want to oversaturate with color. That's why I apply just a little bit of product and um, spread it out with my brayer. And it's always easier to build up layers with little paint rather than add too much paint from the beginning. Now this is a stunning color. It's the Pearl Copper Gold. It does a beautiful shine. You can probably see it on my brayer now. I'm not going to cover up completely the whole background. I just want to have some copper touches at the edges of my page. So that's what I'm doing here. Only touching a side of the page. This way I have some shine all around the darker borders, but at the center it looks lighter. I'm going to repeat the same process to add even more color. And as I said, it's better to work in uh, thin layers rather than apply too much from the beginning. And I'm going to repeat the same process, adding copper here and there. I like to have light and darker areas, it gives more depth on my background. I don't want to have a complete flat color all over the place, I like this grungy look. And just because I couldn't get enough of how gorgeous this color is, I'm going back again to cover up completely the jelly plate and then at the top I'm applying my stencil. Then I place the page on top and this is what I got. Now since we have all that paint out and the jelly plate, it's always nice to play around and make more than just one background. So I'm just going to use a printer paper here and pick up some of the paint that comes out from the jelly plate. And I'm going to show you a really fun technique here, which is going to create a similar background that I can use in a later project. So I'm going for with a lighter color and you can see that my jelly plate is not completely clean, but the paint underneath the one that I'm applying now is completely dry. So I'm going to cover it up completely, making sure that this layer is quite thin. So I'm just removing the excess and I'm going to place on top one of my mixed media papers and pull a print. Before I pull a print, I'm going to make sure that I rub it nicely with my fingers. I apply enough pressure so that uh, I'm going to peel off not only the top layer that I applied, but also the dirty layer that was underneath the dry one. And you can see the beautiful result here. A really gorgeous background and at the same time my jelly plate is now clean. 
Don't forget also that you can use your gel plate as a palette. So I am going to dilute some of that gorgeous copper color with water. This is acrylic paint, so it is easy to dilute it. And I'm going to add some splashes, which I absolutely love for my pages. I'm going to add them on both those pages, so I have a good background for another project that I can work later on. And here are both my backgrounds. I'm going to use one of them for today. And I'm going to stamp with this text stamp all over the background. For that, I'm going to use Sepia Archival Ink. This is an ink that doesn't smudge or smear. It's going to dry permanent. So no matter what I do on top of this background, it's not going to make a mess. The background stamp that I'm using is called French Script. I don't know if it is still available. If it is, I'm going to link it down below. I've had it for ages. If it's not available, I'm going to try and link down below something similar. I like to have different textures on my background. They add a uh, visual interest. So here I'm just using double-sided tape, thin strips of that. I'm going to stick them here and there. And then on top of that, I'm going to add some uh, gilded flakes. These are flakes, copper flakes by Tonic Studios. And I'm going to let you into my thinking process a little bit. I don't have a complete plan of what I'm going to do when I'm making an art journal. I do have, from the beginning, the focal point. For example, here I know I want to add my poppies on top. But for the background, I'm just playing around. So since I had that gorgeous color, the copper color, from the Arteza acrylic paints, I thought it would be nice to add even more copper touches on top of it. If you notice, it is really subtle, but it adds a touch of shine. And I think that the Gilding Flakes by Tonic Studios come in larger pots than the one that I'm using here. I think this was a sample from one of the craft kits. Also, if you don't have Gilding Flakes, you can always use foiling for such a similar technique, which is going to add shine and different texture on your project. Also keep in mind that at this point, I don't know where I'm going to add my focal point. So many of those things that I'm adding now may be covered up at the end. But you will still be able to see bits and pieces from everything I'm doing. I always like to have darker edges on my projects. So I'm using a black suit and a blending tool and inking camp only the edge. And now I'm going to create my page. I have here a watercolor paper. This is thick watercolor paper. And I'm going to link down below both the punch and the watercolor paper that I am using. But you can also get those 6x6 disc bound journals pre-made. Now I grabbed my black Arteza acrylic paint and it's called Mars Black. I am going to cover up completely all the edges of this page. Which is going to provide a nice frame for my other panel. And I'm not going to waste all the paint that I have on my glass mat at the moment. I dilute it with water and add these splashes on top of my background. Now again, I'm going back to my pearl copper gold. I am going to do some dry brushing on the edges. So I'm adding a little bit of uh, that paint on my glass mat. And my brush is completely dry, no water there whatsoever. I'm going to pick up just a little bit of that medium and apply it lightly all around the black frame. The idea is to add some copper shine on the frame but not cover it up completely. I'm using my tool to distress the edges before I stick this panel on top of the other. If you don't have such a tool, you can always use your scissors to do that. I'm applying Nouveau Deluxe glue at the back, but you can use your matte medium or any type of glue that you have and stick this panel on top of the other. I'm really happy with how my background looks at the moment, so I'm just going to start working on my focal points. Back on my gel plate and I'm applying a little bit of Brilliant Red. I'm going to apply it all over the gel plate and then uh, pull a print. Now, the idea behind this is to have similar textures on all of my elements. Since I have such a background, I like to have uh, similar imperfections on my focal points as well. So I'm not just going to cover it up completely with a brush because you will get a different look. Now I'm using Black Archival Ink and I'm going to stamp both my poppies, a large and a smaller one. And then I'm going to use my stamping platform and I'm going to do some layering stamping. I need to add some shadows so that I can bring those poppies into life. Usually I use my big brush markers for doing that, but since I have the convenience of this stamp set, I'm just going to use the layer that adds the shading for you. 
I'm using a very dark red ink and uh, this is actually Grapevine by Altenew and I'm going to do that twice since uh, these shadows are really going to bring those poppies into life. Now you can use the matching dies that come in the set to cut out your flowers. I don't want to have that border around my flowers so I'm going the old way and I'm going to use my scissors to fuzzy cut it. I actually find it very satisfying to fuzzy cut things. I know that there are people that hate it but uh, it, really, it is, really is relaxing for me. With a black marker I'm going to uh, color in those little seeds at the center. In the stamp set there are stamps for the centers that you can use with black ink, but I didn't even bother, my marker worked just fine. Now I need some green paper for my leaves and stems, for that I'm using the exact same technique as before. The color I used here is chromium oxide green. And I'm going to pull a print and then I'm going to make it a little bit dirtier and older by adding another layer, very thin layer, with Mars Brown. Also here I have two more cutout poppies. I didn't end up using these two since I thought that two poppies that I already prepared were enough for my 6x6 small page. And I'm going to use this uh, colored cardstock that I created to stamp the leaves again with black archival ink. I'm going to use my scissors to fuzzy cut it, although there is a die for that as well. And then finally I'm going to use my scissors to cut out long strips of paper so that I can use them as stems. After playing around a little bit with my cutouts I decided with the placement and I glued everything down with uh, Nouveau Deluxe. At the center of my flowers, to embellish them a little bit, I'm adding a dot of uh, Nouveau Drops. In many of these uh, pages that I'm creating for my Year in Flowers project, I do add a big letter. All the letters, just for the consistency of it, come from this die set by Altenew, and uh, I'm using P for poppies this time. Also for each of my flowers I go online and find the definition, so here I have printed out in printer paper the definition of poppy, which I'm uh, inking up with some uh, vintage photo, just to make it uh, more consistent with the rest of the colors. I don't want to have white popping on top of my page, and I'm going to stick everything down. Also notice that I did add a shine thin strip of uh, washi tape underneath. Now I am sticking down my letter P. I'm not going to allow myself to add white splashes all over the place since I absolutely love how this page looks at the moment and I'm going to call it done. So that was the project for today, I hope you had fun and that you got inspired. Down below you will find the full list of all the supplies that I used for today including a coupon code for Arteza as well as a great sale for Altenew. Here are some close-up photos on the project that I made for today. Don't forget to comment, like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thank you all so much for watching and have a lovely day!